Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the One SEO Podcast. Back in the den with me, I have my marketing experts, BJ and Akil. Guys, you ready to do have some fun today? Absolutely. All Let's right, so we've been talking a lot about AI, but we haven't really talked about it in the context of how it is going to change search engine optimization and how people are actually searching online. So let's talk a little bit about large language models. Um, particularly, one of the questions that we keep getting asked is how are they changing the way information is searched and presented? Yeah, so I think the quickest way to qualify a large language model is to say things like ChatGPT, BARD, uh, the omnipresent kind of pop culture things that are coming to the limelight right now. Um, basically, they index information, whether historically or live, and they bring you back answers. Uh, and sometimes that's super profound and you know uh, detailed, and other times it's it, it's taking out the the legwork you would go to get to get that answer in the first place. You know, regardless that we have Google at our fingertips. Now, on the SEO front, we know that there's a lot of opportunity popping up uh, because now search results that used to be tailored for you, you, and me, right, are now changing into, hey, I could get different search results every second, every other second based off of a prior you know, search generative uh, kind of answers and stuff, right? Um, but as far as SEO opportunity, well, now it's you want to be part of the answer. Yep. You wanted to be the answer for the search result before, but now you want to be part of the answer, and that starts to change you know, it's not just I'm looking for something, it's what is the best way to do something? So that education aspect comes to the forefront. Yeah, so I think so everyone understands kind of what we're talking about is up until this point, most people have relied on things like ChatGPT or BARD to really just give them some unique and different information, whether it's helping craft an email or researching for a document that they need to produce. But now what we're seeing is we're actually seeing businesses being brought back when people are asking very specific questions. So just like you would go to Google and do a search for a plumber, people are starting to have those types of searches happen on their, their LLM of choice, right? So how does LLM rank tracking actually help businesses understand their visibility? Before with Google and Bing, it was you got an answer and then you clicked on the link and then you got the answer. But what, what LLM is trying to do is understand the context, understand everything, the nuances in the, in the paragraph itself, and then give you an answer that's tailored to the particular user. So in the future, PPC and SEO is, is going to get really competitive and, and, and there will be another iteration of SEO because you no longer need to go into a website to get the information. You'll be outside of the search engine actually getting the information. So when a business is trying to optimize, they, they want to look at two things. So when you answer, you want to you wanna give the answer in a small paragraph in information and then you also want to give five takeaways. So this is what, what is the current algorithm of ChatGPT and all the LLMs is how can I condense all the information into one paragraph because that's how LLM gives you a response and then also you want to take that information and give five bullet points because that is also how, how LLM responds. So whichever company, whichever business gives you the best answer in that short format is actually going to win out. Yeah, Let's talk about that for a second. So go back to 2014, 2015. It, we started to the mobile first world, right? Yep. Cell phones popped off, everybody's searching on their phones as opposed to running to a computer to do it. Uh, and it wasn't until what, end of 2015, they go, hey, mobile uh, searches outdid desktop searches. That is something that the masses had to adopt. We're in that kind of microcosm now where the masses need to adopt it, so you'll start to see change over time. Uh, and things that you can track from a ranking standpoint when it comes to SEO, uh, there's a lot of forerunners right now as far as uh, tools and services that uh, claim they can do this stuff. The accuracy is yet to be decided, but they can find out where you're from and they can see how often something is searched. That's different data than we're accustomed to getting, which leads to different decision-making processes. Yeah, and I think what inevitably what we're talking about here is how these LLMs are going to change search engine optimization, right? How they're going to change SEO. We're a marketing agency, right? So we need to stay on top of it. But more importantly than that, I want to make sure our audience, the people listening, are understanding you know, what changes to, to come about. So if I'm understanding what you guys are saying correctly, it's just a deeper level of optimization that's going to happen, right? If the website is only going to be feeding that information versus being that final end stop, then it's more important now than ever before to make sure that you have the right information on your website. And to your point about the five bullet points, shorts, concise answers, all of that becomes even more and more prominent because we want to make sure that when someone goes away from Google or away from Bing and is using ChatGPT or BARD on its own and asking questions about local service providers, 
that our clients or your business gets the opportunity to come back in those results. Yeah, yeah uh, just to add to that, Google actually tried this out with feature snippets. Uh, so feature snippets actually gave you the information that was taken from the paragraph, but this is taking it a step further. This is just analyzing the entire context and giving you Google's answers based on what you're actually searching and their, and their bullet points. So one of the ways to aid that is actually understand how Google is answering and just give that answer right away so that Google doesn't have to do that thinking and, and you just show up more compared to your competitors. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we talk a lot about Google, right, because they're the biggest player in the space. But looking at the LLMs, ChatGPT, for example, is pulling their information exclusively from Bing. So are, is there any difference in optimization that needs to happen, but, uh, Google versus Bing, when it comes to optimizing for the LLMs and general optimization? So outright, the answer is no. But the pro tip that we can offer everybody is that Google's looking for that good, high-quality content. And sometimes it takes a good amount to say that, especially compared to your competition. Now, these LLMs, Google's included to a degree, are looking for that concise, digestible bit of information so that it can latch onto it, understand it, and bring it back. You're stuck between a rock and a hard place because one insinuates detailed oriented, the other one insinuates high level. So what you want to do is structure your content for the power skimmer. Give a strong introduction, give some really hardcore bullet points along the way, and then get into the meat and potatoes. Now you're feeding both types of bots. Right. Yeah, so I mean, I've always said that when we create a website and we optimize it, it's for many, many individuals, right? So it's one for the business owner to make sure that it reflects accurately who they are as a business and who they serve. Then it's for the end user, right? Want to make sure that they feel comfortable navigating that site. But at the end of the day, and more so now than ever, it's really producing a website that's digestible by the bots. And so whether that is Bing, whether that is Google, whether that's an LLM, whatever the case may be, that website needs to be optimized at that level so that you can compete on those, you know, on those channels. Um, let's go a little bit deeper. So what are some specific tips that we can give to our audience when it comes to optimizing for, um, for visibility in the LLMs? So aside from just the general making sure that your content is concise. Yeah, yeah. So, so just like, just like Google, uh, LLM also uses high quality of context, backlinks, relevance, internal links, user signal, page authority, quality score, etc. But what LLM takes it a step further is that creating that summary of that entire article and five key takeaways. Now, what that does is it actually gives large language models uh, an additional information that that they can they can go in and read on a on a easier basis and serve that just like people are searching. So, so ju just to, just to give you an example, if I ask you a question you would just give that in a paragraph sentence, right? So that, that's more human connection, more human oriented. And LLM is trying to do the same thing, understanding all of the context on, in the page itself and just giving you a summary of that, just like we talk to humans. Yeah, so what you're talking about are the queries, the information that actually comes back. Because the search is definitely different. What makes generative AI so cool at this point is that it's creating something new. Google can't do that, right? When you go on Google and you search for something, it looks through their repository. It, you know, it crawls and it only brings you back existing information. Whereas these LLMs are actually able to create or devise, surmise information. So how, what kind of differences should people expect in those queries coming back when they're looking for local service providers, let's say? Yeah, so you're gonna wanna look at the big picture. It's not just an SEO initiative. It is not just an advertising initiative. It's not just a brand initiative. You know, anybody who's putting all their eggs into one basket saying you don't need the others, it's not true, right? The fact of the matter is when you ask LMM, or LLM a question, excuse me, um, it's gonna give back data. So, hey, who's the best provider for XYZ in this area? It's gonna say, hey, based off of these reviews and the content they produce uh, and the amount of traffic we see going in and out the site, they're gonna come back with the best answer. So now it's getting past the end user and what they're able to see in one fell swoop as opposed to or, you know, going looking at all these different things. Yeah, and I think for, for the audience and for people watching, what you should expect from your marketers is just more detail as far as the types of content that they're going to be requesting. And it's going to be really important for you to be comfortable being uncomfortable because you may look at content that's being provided and be like, oh, I don't like this. This doesn't read well. But you need to take into account what you're trying to accomplish. You're not trying to get people to your website anymore. You're trying to get people to get your name, get your number, and make that phone call. It's a huge difference. And I could, I'm exaggerating a little bit there. We're not quite there yet. Yeah. But that's the end result that is going to happen is your, your website is going to serve 
as an information portal for all of these platforms and all of these channels, including Google and Bing and all of the LLMs as well. So that's why it's super important that you are willing to change along with this evolution that we're seeing in the industry. Now, we're all about tracking here. So, and Akhil, I know I cut you off, so feel free to add to the, the question, but what are some tools that people can use to track their their ranking, essentially, like their presence on these LLM platforms? As of right now, there, there are no tools because it's still in beta. Right. So, and the, the benefit, once these you start to utilize these tools and you start to look at how often you're being brought back in a result or in a query answer, you're going to start to be able to see how to further develop your content. Like us as marketers, we will be able to be able to see what's actually triggering your business to come back on these inevitable search engines is what they're becoming and be able to help further that optimization to, to make it go through. Yep. Right? Now, you're going to see how people got to you in the first place, and you're going to leverage that data to do what you need to do next. The fun part about that is the same goes for your competition. Right. Look at your competition, see what gets them to come back and search generative uh, you know, results, and then extrapolate on top of that. Well, BJ, we talked about a lot of information and probably confused some people, so let's kind of tie it all in together. Mm -hmm. So I'd like, for, for our one-off, the end of the podcast, I want you to talk to me a little bit about what, what do you foresee this evolution of SEO looking like as these AI technologies continue to increase? Yeah, so I'll say on the SEO front, it's, we're going to keep pushing, right? When we latch onto something, just like the internet back in the 90s was picked up and gained traction, as a society, we're going to adopt it. You're going to see it in your cell phones, you're going to see it in your smartwatches, um, and SEO is going to lead that charge. What comes shortly thereafter SEO, because what does everybody want to do with the internet? Make money. Yep. We're going to see ads coming into you know, search generative experience, uh, or SGE as they like to call it in the media, but the precursor of that is SEO. So watching that evolve and watching how people come back and find you and stuff is going to get faster and faster and faster. And let's be honest, uh, 10 years ago, you would say best pizza place near me or best pizza place Philadelphia, right? Now it's best pizza place. Now it's pizza place and now it's pizza. Yep. We're getting lazier, but in the sense that we're expecting the answer quicker, yep. this is only going to speed that up even more. So decisions are going to be made faster, faster, and faster. Yeah, and I mean, you're seeing it across pretty well much just about every industry. They're adopting more and more technology, which is changing how they work. It's changing the flow, but it's not changing the end result, right? Our, the job is still to get people it, to make that connection, for you to get connected to your ideal customer. And this is going to be a part of that process. Akhil, BJ, thank you guys so much for joining us today. Thank you guys so much for joining us for another episode of the One SEO Podcast. We look forward to talking with you next time. See you later.